Hello? Hello, Tina, Tina. Yeah, I like when you say it like that. Say it with a soft T. Tina. <laughs> How the hell are you? Doing good. Are you? What, what, what are you doing now? Where are you at? You uh, hanging out in L.A. or what's going on with you? No, man. I'm not a Los Angeles boy. I'm a Louisiana boy. Uh, uh, that part of L.A. you got right. Uh, I uh, am doing a million interviews, and I'm also in the studio with one war beast from Fort Worth, Dallas, Texas area, and we're doing the second record for House Core Records. They did a awesome release for me a couple years back. To this day, I believe it was released from what I've gathered today from the news from the boys. Right. And it's going awesome, man, and it sounds relentless. And, uh, yeah, man, I've been in the friggin' studio for <laughs> months and months and months with so many different projects. I feel like a, a glow in the dark. My studio <laughs> tan is rocking. Well, that's awesome, though. It's keeping you out of trouble, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know about that one, but you know. Well, we like it when you get in trouble because that's who you are. That's what makes you feel. You know what I mean, right? I right? mean, I you know, I guess to a certain degree there. You know, but, uh, <laughs> well, listen, you know, hard to believe. Vulgar display of power. Twenty years. Good lord. Does it make you feel old? <laughs> Constantly, you're rubbing it in, sweet. I'm not rubbing it in because we're probably around the same age, Phil. I'm not, you know. I doubt it. I bet I'm older. Well, you're pro yeah, you probably are older than me, and I probably look way better than you. I would hope friggin' so. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I look like a car wreck. Oh, you do not. So, vulgar display of power. You guys are, uh, re I guess it's remastered, and you're going to reissue it out on the 15th, which is a week from today, actually. So, And it it's going to include that new song, Piss, which we're the only station here in North Carolina playing it, by the way, which I don't understand. No one has balls these days anymore, Phil. Well, maybe I should have called it urine. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, tell me about the song anyway. Why didn't it make the, the album the first time around, or did it just get lost in the shuffle? No, it didn't get lost in the shuffle. It was really my call to not put it on the record, because I guess at the time I felt every time I would listen as a whole to Vulgar Display of Power, it would kind of stick out like a sore thumb, because Vulgar Display had a writing style that was, you know, obviously pointed mm -hmm. and directed. It's just that the songs themselves, uh, the guys at the time, the way they would, how do I put this, the way they would go about getting into and out of certain parts they had of this this very clever 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 almost a semi I don't want to say use the word technical it's more clever way of getting in and out of parts masters of it you know mm -hmm. uh, to me I, I felt like piss was a little more straight too straight too uh I guess it comparatively with the other songs, just a little simple, a little, uh, yeah, just, I, I'll leave it like that. Just a little too simple for its own good at the time. And uh, I still think I made the right call. But the thing about Piss is, and the good thing is 20 years later down the line, <laughs> is, the, is, is the fact that it exists at all. Because Pantera, you know, we do not have a whole lot of leftovers, if you know what I'm saying. Right. You know, when we would write songs, it was always get it done, trim the fat, and there's the song. And we would really have nothing left over at the end of the day. So that's what makes this song very unique in itself, is that it exists at all. So for your big-time Pantera fan or, or, or whatever, you know, to that degree, you know, it is really a, a, a collector's item, and, mm. and that's why we're making it available for the people, because, you know, if you're a fan of a band and you want everything that they've ever touched, then it, understandable, you know, you, you would want a track like Piss, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's 
really just for the fans and, and aside from like me and Dimebag's crazy four track stuff, really it is like the only thing left over. I did see though, Phil, that um, there was another song released, and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. But Dime's actually singing on it. And I know Rita is using it for the skateboard commercial. I think. Or have you heard? Do you know what I'm talking about? I probably heard one. I, I, I no, I don't know what you're talking about. But I know Dimebag did so many different. Yeah four tracking and his own tunes and stuff like that so i i don't know it's i don't think it's a pantera thing so to speak well yeah well they're uh they're marketing as pantera and dime obviously but um, uh, you know so but you're happy then that piss is now on the the remastered album well i'm happy for the fans yeah. you know i'm happy for the fans because like i say it's a collector's item well you know so I know that, you know, anyone who follows you and Pantera know, you know, the history behind everything. Have you have you made amends with the the rest of the guys? Have you, I mean, what's been going on? Have you I guys- have not had that luxury of speaking with one Vinnie Paul. Mm-hmm. And, you know, really that's his call. My door is wide open. And, I, you know, I'm the type of person that there is no way I could live my life with this loose end, this this, this right. grudge, this wide open wound. You know, I like to at least have some semblance of, uh, you know, burying the Closure. hatchet, so to speak, yeah. you know, or at least just talking out our differences or at least having the friggin' opportunity to talk to the guy. But, you know, He's made his decisions. I, in my biggest harp and and, and and hopes and wishes, I you know I I I wish that one day he would decide to actually talk to me, so we could work this out. I think it would be very very healthy right. for both of us. I know it would definitely be for me, and I, I honestly, I, and I've told Vince this. Uh, via email before I said, dude, if if it takes me standing there and letting you punch me in the face repeatedly over and over again, I'll let you. I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm I've got enough scars on my forehead. I could be a, a pro wrestler. You know, it's like, right. dude, go for it. As long as we can talk afterwards, you know. Yeah. And yeah. it just hasn't happened, man. And I, I, it's. Well, you know, it is, it's frustrating, but like I say, my door is wide open. Yeah, and I mean, there's only so much you can do, you know. It, you know, you, you can't do. Yeah. There's only so much you can't do either, you know. You, right. I can't think for him. I can't feel for him. So, right. you know, all I can do is really let him do what he has to do. Well, is the... Support what he does and, 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 and just, you know, uh, let Vince heal the way Vince needs to heal if he is healing you know I'm not sure right I mean it's been what eight years <laughs> too long it's been uh, too long well, is it and it's all over you know and correct me if I'm wrong but it's all over the miscommunication of an interview correct and and you were quoted in saying something um and it made the headlines and that was basically right before time you know got murdered and that's and that's what the whole issue is about right yeah the media yeah. really really went out of their way Mm -hmm. and uh, they went out of their way to create this fantastic rift between the band which already you know there was a falling out I I was in a real bad way uh, with chronic pain just Mm -hmm. eating me alive and then with the drug problems which you know I'm wide open to speak about all that fucking crap you know I, I had no problem talking about it it's a it is a big misunderstanding, in my opinion. I think that just like, uh, take, for instance, profootballtalk.com. You have a guy that the main writer there, his name is Mike Florio. He'll take something a player says completely out of context to the entire paragraph of what he said, but he'll... Nah, he'll, he'll, he'll grab one little sentence that he says, not knowing 
what air it was spoken in, not knowing, you know, when you read something in black and white, it comes out black and white, plain mm-hmm. and simple, to the point. But you cannot read sense of humor. You know, you can't read context and how it was really said. So this guy, you know, he's a wind-up artist, and he knows what he's doing, and he does it to get a million hits, which uh, ProFootballTalk.com gets a million hits. So I think in the same sense, we were put in that situation that uh, whatever friggin' magazine put out the, the article, you know, Mm-hmm. They grabbed a line that I said. They know, you know, that they, they don't know me from Adam. I I say things off the cuff. I say things. I have my own sense of humor. The way I say things, and it was taken completely out of context. And I said, I will stand by that till I'm I hit the dirt myself. And I, you know, believe me, man, you know, I've never in my life raised my hand in anger to any of those guys in that band. It's just, you know, Mm -hmm. talk is talk, action is action. And, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, you guys are like, it's a mess. It is. It's, you guys are like family, but you met them when you were, what, 19 years old? 17 years old. 17 years old. I mean, you guys grew up essentially together in your young adult life. It's got to be, it's got to be just painful, you know, that you kind of lost a part of your family. It's the truth. It it is very, very true. But you know what? Vince lost part of his family, too. And he also, watched his brother get shot right in front of him. So yeah. I cannot even imagine the plethora of emotion that runs through the guy, and I don't think anybody in their right mind could judge Vince in that light, man, because that is a dramatic, horrific thing that I would not wish on anybody, man. And I just, I think people ought to feel prevents when it comes to that you know uh there is a contingency out there that you know uh i've I've read here and there people are like uh, fine you know vince get over it you know get over it and make up with phil this and that whatever i've read that contingency i've read where of course i'm an asshole etc 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 and really that's just you know that's people talking shit that they don't really know what the heck they're talking about. Vince has to go through what he has to go through. But in my biggest hopes of all hopes, I would love to sit down and talk with the guy and and really just hash out whatever demons we have to hash out and move on. Right. Move on one way or another. Look, one thing I've learned, people love to hate. Maybe, maybe one day you'll run because into him. Because it's easy to hate. Absolutely. To love is not the tough guy way. That's bullshit in my book, man. Right, right. You know, I come with love first. I come when I meet people. I want to like people right off the bat. You know, I'm a people person, man. I come with love. So it's like, that's why it's it's so easy to hate. It's just a natural natural thing right. pretty boring actually well, maybe maybe you know one day you guys will run into each other and hash it out and, and things will, will get better so but um, well let's get off of this subject is there one memory like that stands out to you as like one of the best memories of you in Pantera is there one outstanding one that you just always think back to that's put you in that happy place that, that's impossible yeah. but, but you know I all I know is you know, Pantera was such a unique situation. Absolutely. I mean, you guys brought extreme metal to life. You saved metal. Maybe maybe at the time, for sure. You know, I, yeah. I, I just... Such an overwhelming experience being around these three musicians that were so, so talented and just such a tight fantastic group of guys and, and uh, the whole believe me like moving from New Orleans at 17 and going to this whole new world which was the Dallas Fort Worth scene you know th- 
made it dime bag, and, and the rest of them had their own language, basically. I had to learn a whole different language because dime bag had a slang for everything <laughs> under the sun. You know, so it's like, oh, my God, what is this guy saying? So either way, look, I miss all that stuff, man. I, I really do, and, and I, the camaraderie and just being in the presence of these guys and watching them work. At the drop of a hat, you know, if someone made a joke about country and Western music, they could just, uh, like I say, at the drop of a hat, just start jamming country and Western music, and it sounds like the real deal. They could play samba. They could do, man. They could do anything they friggin' wanted. Just that level of professionalism and talent around you is just—it's—it's it's infectious, and it's just. It's missed. It's missed in my life. No doubt. I mean, we as fans miss you. I mean, last year, Mayhem, you know, the lineup, it was, um, who was it? Disturb, God, Smack, Triven, a bunch of bands came out and played tribute to Pantera and played Walk on stage. And does that ever, like, when you see something like that, I mean, does it just, how does that make you feel? I mean, these bands that look up to Pantera, you, Phil, look up to you and the guys in Pantera, I mean, it's got to be an overwhelming feeling. Mm. It has to be. It is overwhelming, but it's also, you know, I've said this in the past, and I, by God, I mean this with every inch of my fiber. Pantera's fans were the best in the world, mm-hmm. still are. And, and, you know, the fact that we're sitting here talking about it 20 years later and new songs getting rotated on the radio and whatnot, that just goes to prove that our fans are just fantastic. And Pantera's camaraderie with the audience was very unique, very, very unique thing uh, for its time. We took, we basically, you know, we had this, bond with the audience it, gosh that that grew from playing in clubs and a, you, I guess you would have to be in a time capsule just to see how back in the day when Pantera grew into what we did uh, on a local level and how we took over the club scenes and destroyed all their uh, you know, glammy, whatever. You had to look this glam way to get this gig or whatnot, or you, you're kicked out on your ass. We took that whole thing, shaped it into our own thing, ousted the the glam stuff, and we were packing these clubs. And, you know, back in the day, pits were pits were pits, and the the unwritten laws of the pit, you know, when someone falls on their ass, you pick them up. When someone stage dives, you catch them. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. sure you see that, that in full force today. You know, we were so used to kids being all over the stage, doing flips off the stage, doing dives off of Vinnie Paul's drum riser. We were used to all that, and we kind of brought that to the arenas with us, you know, after we got you know, quote-unquote popular, and and it rubbed off, you know, and I think we we showed an audience that you didn't have to be this untouchable, long-maned, uh, uh, what do you call, like, you know, when I was a kid, heavy metal bands, it seemed like, you know, if you went and saw them in an, an arena, they were on the stage, a million miles away from you, right. and you know there they were. Keep it there, real. there they sat on their perch. Right. Whereas at a Pantera show, shoot, I might stop in the middle of a song and pull someone up on stage just for the sake of doing it. You know, yeah, you know. So it, it, it was very unique for its time. Yeah, it doesn't happen like that anymore at no. all, at all. And I know you guys were big on after the shows, inviting some of the fans back and, you know, partying with them. And you guys kept it real. You know, you were humble and you, you appreciated it and, and you liked to party with your fans. So you can't can't complain about that, right, as a fan. Right? Well, we were fans, too. And I'm still a fan of, of, of all kinds of music. Music is just, you know, my whole life. And I'm still a fan, you know. Mm, yeah. So, 
<laughs> well, with that That's said, true. with your new with your new group, what what was it called again? The Say again? the band that you're you're with now. Uh, I'm producing a band called War Beast. I'm oh. not in War Beast. Okay. But now, are you still doing Down? Yeah, Down has an EP that is absolutely 100% finished. I'm waiting on artwork that uh, should be out the middle summer, late summer at the very latest, I would think, early fall at the very, very, very latest. And then I got a solo record that I've done. It's in the can. It just needs to be, I, I think, like one more pass on the mix. And that thing is a blistering, brutal, brutal listen. Maybe one of the most intense things I've ever done. And for God's sakes, man, I've been, like I said, I've been in the studio for a long, long time. You've been busy. Now, is Rex Brown still with you in down? No, he's not. He moved on because, you know, he's, Rex, Rex is in this band called Kill Devil Hill, and he's very happy, and I support him in this. And then, you know, it's, it's more along the lines of music that he wants to play and I, that's understood and, and we support each other he's still a down fan he's still a brother of mine we speak and you know we support each other for sure right on yeah that's awesome well we're looking forward to uh, the solo album you said it's intense is it is it intense as, as far as like the the lyric side of it or just you're, you're you're opening up about you know some personal things or is it intense as far as like melt your face off you know, intense. Both. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to that. And um, you you don't have a title of it, or is it just going to be self titled? It's Philip H. Anselmo, and the name of the record is Walk Through Exits Only. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to that. Also, looking forward to. Uh, to the remastered Vulgar Display of Power coming out 20 years later next week, a week from today on Tuesday. Phil, thank you so much for taking some time. I know you're super busy, but I appreciate you uh, you calling me, even though you called me Lisa. Call me Tina again. Tina. Mm, just keep going. Tina. <laughs> it was a pleasure, love, and I appreciate it too, man. Awesome, you know, sweet. Like I say, it goes both ways. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't have to have me on the damn radio today or whatever, but you did. I wouldn't have missed it. You are very welcome. And we're looking forward to all of your stuff coming out. Hopefully, maybe you'll swing through Eastern North Carolina and we can actually see it live. That would be pretty awesome. Man, I most certainly would love to do that one thing. Well, you call me if you're in the area and I will go and um, we'll have some drinks together or whatever and we'll, we'll kick ass and do rock and roll like it should be. Come on out and see me and we will turn up some <laughs> sips, young lady. You got it, Phil. Listen, babe, take care. Thank you again. All right, babe. Bye.